So one one thing that we're going to be doing a lot during the high whole holy days, the ten days of tshuva, is tefillah. We're going to be spending time in shul. We're going to bring to davening, and we actually do this all year round. It's one of the most um, often done mitzvot that we have. It's almost like it's a vital thing, just like we have to breathe, like we have to dive, and we do this every day. We have to eat, you know, right? So let's understand just a bit of an appreciation of what it is. And the truth is, I'm sure we've gone through this before, but the Talmud says in Brachot, there are four things that have to be strengthened in a constant way. And, a li- and it's things like Torah, Derech Eretz, person actually to work hard at their work, also person to strengthen themselves. It's uh, person can uh, easily get a little laid back. But one of the things are tefillah. That person can strengthen themselves. So it's, it's totally natural to go over different times and we'll talk about it and get a better understanding, and especially now in the days of Elul. And Elul is specifically, it's one of the best times of the year for, for tefillah. The Baal HaTanya would say that imagine if a king, when he's in his palace, it's sometimes hard to... Uh, to reach him, you have to talk to secretary, you have to make an appointment, they might, he might not let you in. Uh, you might have to go to a fundraising dinner and give a lot of money to be able to meet him, right? But um, during, when he's ill, when he's on vacation, when he's traveling through the country, it's easier to meet him. So Elul is a time that Hashem is, is coming to the world. And during this time, it's a since Hashem is coming to us, we're more receptive to talk to Him as well. So it's a great time for tefillah. So let me tell you a story about perhaps one way which is not, not, a, not a good way to daven and one way which is an example of a good, good way to daven. So the story goes that there's someone who has an uh, important business meeting in Man- Manhattan and he's a deal which he's going to make, make a lot of money and he's driving around. But, of course, it's not so easy to find parking and he can't find. So he's driving, he's circling, and at times when he's coming, he's a minute, one, one, one minute late, two minutes late, and he says, Rebbeinu Shalom Hashem, please help me find the parking spot. Please, please. Or he keeps working, and uh, 10 seconds later, he sees an open spot. He says, never, never mind God, I got, I, 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 I it's fine, it problem, problem's all, I, I don't, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and the other story is, and this is an interesting story, we are, it probably doesn't happen so much, but the Malbim used this as, a, as an example to explain a Pasuk in, in Tehillim. The story goes that someone gets sick, and he goes to the hospital, and it's a serious ail- ailment, and he has a specialist, like a really warm, wonderful doctor who's taking care of him. <coughs> And as this goes, goes on, and he goes, what a, what a wonderful human being this doctor is. And he befriends the guy, and he makes, he makes a friend. And finally, after a couple of months, he gets healed, he gets out of the hospital. But he tells the doctor, he says, you know what? I got two, got two things out of my stay. The first thing is that I got healed. But the other thing, which is even better, is that I made a new friend. And he says, it, for me, it, the second one is more valuable than the first one, right? Which doesn't happen so often, but David Mel said, Tov chastecha mechayim. Experiencing your kindness is greater than life itself. The relationship I've built with you through praying and through you healing me and the, the tight relationship I have with you through my coming closer to you as, during my illness, during my trouble, that was more valuable to me than actually, the salvation I actually had. Because feel has the ability to build a relationship with Hashem. There's a story, and this explains why tefillah is we do it on a daily basis, which is that we, we know that the man used to fall every single day. In the desert, they would go out get their, their food, and they would go out and they would get the man which would fall every day. And the question is, why couldn't the man just fall once a year? Have this big avalanche of man, and you'll go with your with your wheelbarrows and you'll put up your silos, you know, and you'll have your silos a month for the whole year. Why do you have to have, need a daily miracle? Now we know miracles don't happen for no reason. 
Why would a daily miracle a month happen? Well, it just would it be a yearly thing or a monthly thing. Why every day? And Chazal explained the Shem, it's like a father. Well, imagine the father sends off his son, let's say, to Israel to study or he sends him off to college somewhere. And he gives his son his credit card. So, I don't know when the next time he'll, he'll get a call back from his son. <laughs> might be a while. Hello, Dad, I'm in uh, trouble. You know, you might not really hear so much from his son. But let's say he says, here, here, this is, I'll give you some money now. If you want more, give me a, give me a call and I'll uh, transfer some, something to your account. So then he'd hear from all, all the time, Dad, I want this, I want that, I want to go, I want this trip, that trip. He'll let him all the time. The same thing is that Hashem, what Hashem wants from us most of all is that Hashem is our Father. And what He wants most is a relationship with us. And by us davening to Him and asking Him for our, for our needs, that builds the relationship we have with us. The biggest curse, the snake, in, in the Garden of Eden was that he could eat dirt. Meaning, he didn't have, he would, his food was totally available. He didn't lack anything. Didn't and we didn't, didn't have to work anything. And we think, hey, that's the, what do you mean, that's a curse? You, you, imagine if we wouldn't have to work. We just, all, we, our food, whatever we'd have, we'd just, we'd just have it. We think that's, that's, that's retirement. That's a blessing. You know, that's, you know, that's what pe people work all their life, be able to get a situation that they don't have to work. But the truth is that when a person doesn't have to work, they don't need Hashem. And the biggest curse is not needing Hashem. But, and so that's one reason why tefillah is so necessary. Because tefillah is avodat halib. It builds up our heart. It builds up our recognition of, of Hashem. And that we need to do all, all the time. It's sort of like, almost like a food, or as it were, for our, for, for our neshama, that it gives us that strength. <coughs> but let's go through another, some more questions about tefillah to help us understand it better. And that is, one of the questions are, um, which people may have is, and if Hashem knows what we need, we believe Hashem is totally kind, Hashem is our Father, Hashem looking after us. Number two, Hashem knows everything. Hashem knows whatever is, whatever is going on in our life, and He knows what's best for us. So, two questions. First of all, why do we pray? If Hashem knows what we want, why doesn't He just give it to us? Another question is, there's a concept of a person accepting his lot in life with, with love, accepting his serim bava, even suffering to be able to find meaning in that. So let a person be happy with their situation. Why does a person want to pray to improve their lot? Just, just, just accept it. And the reason, and based on what we're saying, we can try, we try to explain, explain these, these concepts. Although. I have to say, a complete understanding of prayer and how it works and why it's necessary, I don't profess to have a complete understanding. It's, it's Gemara Chazal say, it's very mamdim brumer shalom, things that stand in the heights of the world. It's very, I'll, let me just say a couple ideas, well, but, I mean, part yeah. Of, part of prayer is, is, I mean, it's not only requests. Mm -hmm. Part of prayer is also thanksgiving. Absolutely. So, I mean, so, I mean, that in itself is a reason. Right. I mean, nothing else. Absolutely. I, I, so I, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. I mean, it's just, it, you know, requests, obviously, when you're... Right, right. So, the, the very nature, f that's a great point. And besides for prayer, let me, um, the Chavos Lomos lists five things, as they were saying, five things that's in prayer. Let me first, let me first go address these questions, and we'll, then we'll, we'll, we'll move on to that part. So, the reason why, um, the reason why prayer, why we, why, we, why we pray, one of the main reasons are, is that there's a concept called bitachon, which is trust in Hashem. When a person trusts in Hashem, it's one of the greatest res recipes for success, for protection. He becomes under Hashem's personal guidance, and Hashem sort of lifts him through and helps him out. Now, he won't always get exactly what he might have wanted, but it'll be the best for him in a very good, good way. The way a person, tr when a person prays a lot for something, what they're really doing is building trust in Hashem. If I, let's say I want, I want some, let's say I want, um, let's say I, I want a, uh, I don't know, I want a vacation, I want a, a new car, right? So if I pray to Hashem, please can I have this new car, right? So every time I pray, I'm acknowledging that Hashem has the ability to help me, 
and that's an important thing. You're, you're, you're teaching, your and Hashem is able to help me, and my success is through Him. And the more you do that, the more trust you have that Hashem can help you. When a person prays to Hashem, knows Hashem can help you, Hashem will enter his life more and more. It's like, I don't know if you know, but if a child just cries out to their father, right? It's a natural thing for the father to want to help as best as best he can. He'll, he'll cut the red tape, he'll break the rule, he'll do whatever he can. It's just something natural in the world. And the more a person trusts in Hashem, the more Hashem is here to help him. And, about, and let's go back to the question. It's true whatever Hashem does is for, for the best. But imagine, let's give the following example. Imagine someone is sick, and, he's in, he's in, and the doctor says, you know what you need to do? You have to take this medicine every day. And it's a, doesn't, it's, it's a, it's, you have to drink this thing, it really doesn't taste great. It's really, it's really bad, <laughs> but <laughs> it's good for you. You need it, you know, it helps you. So, of course, the doctor is well-meaning, and he's going to drink this medicine, and it's for his benefit. But let's say the doctor says, but you know what? If you do this exercise every day, if you do, you do 30 push-ups every day and you, walk, and you walk a mile, you'll be able to build yourself up that I have a di- other medicine, a sweet-tasting medicine that you, that you can have. So I mean, if you build yourself up, if you get healthier, you'll get a sweeter m- mad m- medicine. And that's what how Rav Zalvlov explains feel as well. Meaning it's true that everything is for our, for our good. But sometimes it could be something, it could be difficult and for our good. But if a person prays, he changes. And there's, there's a much easier and much more comfortable solution for him once he's opening himself up to, to bring Hashem into the picture. So there are other solutions which would work and a lot easier to have. The truth is, the, Ram, the Ramchal says that there are many brachos that are waiting to come to a person. And it's a person just has to pray to open them up. Sometimes a person has challenges which come for the sole purpose of him praying. And therefore, when he prays, the reason for the challenge falls, falls away and it just disappears. And Rav Sadek said that every challenge a person has, it comes up with a certain lock. And there's a key that opens up that lock. And that key is prayer. So by the right prayer the person does, a person can unlock every challenge and go through every impasse in, in life. And one, so let's go, and as David was saying so rightly, besides for prayer being requests, which really request really means putting one's trust in, in, ha, in Hashem. There are four, there are four, four other parts that, that's in tefillah. One is to express the yearning of the soul to make contact with Hashem. Meaning, by tefillah, by re- recognizing Hashem in the world, and by, we, by tefillah, we, in Shemunesu, the Shekhinah comes right to us. We talk directly to Hashem, like a person talks to his friend. When they want to express, and we, we, we bless Him, we realize His greatness, it's, it's something which the, expresses the yearning of the soul. Second is to feel humility towards Hashem, by realizing that Hashem is the address for our success. We realize that we, 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 we don't make the world go, the world doesn't revolve around us that there's someone, there's someone greater than us who's, mi- who's di- directing things. The third is, I mean, to recognize the, the greatest of Hashem, as we mentioned, and force us to praise and thank Hashem for His many kindnesses. We, we, um, every bracha we say, we're thanking Hashem, especially we start off tefillah with birkot hashachar, thanking Hashem for what we have every day, for our neshama, for our body that works, being able to walk, to see, to, to uh, be able to, n- we're not paralyzed, we can move, we have ground to walk on. There are many things that we feel refreshed every good night's sleep. There are many things in the world that we only appreciate by making a brachot. I once asked one of my Rosh, one of Rosh Hashivas, how does a person really have a happy life? How does a person add more joy of life into their life? And he said, he said, one of the things he said was, when you say Birchot HaShachar in the morning, think, put some thought into what you're saying. Because when you appreciate what you have every single day, it transforms how you look at what, at what you have and what the day has to offer. And the last thing is to cast one's burdens on Hashem 
by requesting all one's needs and realizing that all one's affairs are in his hands. And so perhaps, I guess, the last question is, does, does tefillah work? And perhaps someone will say, well, what if I ask Hashem and I won't get it? How, how will I feel? And the answer to that is, and I think, I guess perhaps I'll say two different stories, perhaps to help clarify this point. It, uh, sometimes people feel, let me just start with the following thing. First, first of all, the greatest benefit of tefillah is the connection itself. The tr- I'm going to say tefillah does help, but, even, but that's, that perhaps not, might not be the main point of tefillah. It has these other five things which you have without that. Now, but the other aspect is, of course, that you can actually get what you need in life through tefillah. It's called chayei sha'a. Your life in this world will be enhanced through, t- through tefillah. So, there is, there once, it once happened a couple years ago in Israel. There was this person, I think, I think, it, was a, I think it was a rabbi, and everyone was praying for him, and fortunately it didn't work. And the, I mean, I think it didn't work, let's say. It didn't, he did not live, he didn't, get a, he didn't have a complete recovery. I want to say it didn't work. And the widow once asked one of the rabbis at the time, he said, how can it be? People were praying so hard. How can it be that it wasn't answered? Like the whole world was praying for him. How could she not, not, not answer him, not answer that? And, and the answer was, was that, you know, maybe Hashem knows we give tefillahs to Hashem, they're like seeds, and Hashem knows how to sprout them, how to make the most out of them. It could be that Hashem knew that for that person, the best, Hashem does the best with the tefillah. Hashem knew perhaps there are other people, maybe a relative of his might be sick, and Hashem just took those tefillahs and used it for that other relative, or maybe someone else in the world is sick, and Hashem took those tefillahs, maybe his, maybe his, his children, you know, maybe Hashem took those tefillahs and put them the right, and the right address. I mean, the great, greatest example that I have in my own life was last year, where the whole, where the Jewish nation around the world were all praying for three kids who were kidnapped and unfortunately were murdered. And people were praying all the time. It, it brought the Jews together like, like, like I've never experienced before in my life. And, but still, and one might think, you know, it didn't help. These Jews, they, these kids, they were murdered. And the answer is, you have to just wait one more week. When they were, when hundreds, over a thousand rockets with bombs were fired into Israel. And miraculously, they all, they uh, virtually, in, in, you know, almost all cities, you know, I'm not even sure, I'm not, I, I don't know, they can't, if there were any casualties, I could count them on my, on my, on my hand. Like even the Arabs were realizing that God was on the side of the Jewish people. You know, they said there was one missile which was headed straight towards downtown Tel Aviv and the Iron Dome system mal- malfunctioned and it was on a direct trajectory towards Tel Aviv, right? And apparently a gust of wind came at that moment and it pushed the missile a couple of feet off and it Fell, fell into the Mediter- Mediterranean. So we see that Hashem, some, I believe, I can't, uh, my personal belief, and I'm not going to guarantee this, I don't know exactly what happens in heaven, but my belief is that Hashem took those tefillos that were, that were the Jewish world was saying as one and used it to protect all their other brothers in, in, in Israel. But the truth is, it's not just for other people. Chazal say that if a tefillah doesn't help totally, it helps half. And if Hashem, if it won't help now, it will be answered later. Because every tefillah has an answer. You know, when people say, yeah, there was an answer, the answer was no, that's not a Jewish concept. <coughs> Who comes with every prayer which is uttered has an answer, might not be, Hashem knows what's <coughs> best, but it, it will have a beneficial effect. Um, and the other thing is, sometimes people feel that feels aren't answered because sometimes they didn't really expect it to be answered. Like, let's say, I want, you know, I, I, I want something, but let's see, what, what's, what's, what's something, something very lost someone might pray for? Like, I want to pray that, you know, 
that people shouldn't you know there's people shouldn't be hungry in I don't know some 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 country some town I don't know exactly you can give it just 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 an example so even though it's a noble thing thing to do but most people aren't saints and when they add her that fila it's so you rate it on a scale of one one to ten for most people you know who be people being oh, I wouldn't I'm, I'm not sure it wouldn't be a ten it might be a lower number and probably it wouldn't be something they care so passionately about it's, because it's something a little far off, they're able to connect to that. But let's say someone would pray for something they really care about. Like let's say he's into uh, base, baseball, and it's a sold a sold a sold out game of you know like the you know of this uh, the you know the the, fi- the last game, and it's a sold out. He wants a good seat to this game, right? It's his his home team is playing. He wants to be there, but it's sold 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 out. Imagine if he goes and enters from the he says. Hashem, please, can I have tickets to that game? Like, if you'd measure, if you'd measure on a scale of one to ten, like how excited he is, how into this feel is, you might be like off, off the charts. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? He might really want it. So, a person finds something to Hashem, and he wants, and he cares about. It doesn't have to be, and it can be something very, like you know, like a baseball game. It doesn't have to be. When actually Davis Hashem for something he really wants, and he Davis, let's say, every day after Shem Esri, every day. For that one thing, and he really cares about it, a person, I think, and I, not, I'm not going to guarantee it, but I, I'm telling you that a person will see that fila to be answered. I mean, there's, so someone, had a, someone has a book, which I read, where he, he recommends it to people. He describes sort of how to do it with greater de- detail. The truth is, when a person asks something and he really cares about it and expects it to happen, Hashem will, Hashem will usually ans- an- answer, answer him. And again, might not be... It, it will usually be answered, and the reason is, is because Hashem wants to build a relationship with him. And the way relationships start, you know, the first thing a child does is the child asks the things from his, can I have this, can I have that, can I have a candy, can I have this? That's how relationships start. You know, it gets better than that, it gets, you know, but it starts with asking and getting things answered. And so, I want to, uh, I guess I could um, take some questions afterwards, but I just want to a bracha that we should learn how to use tefillah. The Chazanish said tefillah is like a power, like a rod of might. You know, a person can accomplish tremendous things with this power of tefillah. We're able to use it to find a lot of success in this world and Hashem fulfill all the wishes of our hearts for the good. Amen. Amen.